Welcome back everyone. Today's job, that. Yep. Gonna build another fire trailer. Uh, this isn't gonna be so much a fire trailer, more so a uh, tree watering trailer. It's gonna be a little bit different from the other ones I've been building. Um, this is gonna be super simple. Uh, I want it quite low to the ground. So I'm not gonna have suspension. I'm gonna weld the axle straight to the frame. So it sits nice and low, gonna be as lightweight as possible. Um, but yeah, it's just because I'm getting a few fruit trees around here and stuff and I've just been hand watering. I'm gonna put retic in it eventually, but just for now, I just want a nice little trailer. I can tow with the quad, water all the plants. And um, obviously it's gonna like second as another fire trailer. So here's my goodies. I'm gonna run one of these little Honda four stroke pumps. It's a GX10 or something from memory. Um, yeah, awesome little pump. Perfect for what I want. And here's all my goodies. I wasn't going to make it into a fire trailer, I was just going to have it as a watering trailer. But I've got a hose reel there, so why not chuck it on just in case? Yeah, you'd be mad not to. So that's gone on as well. Here's my hubs, my hitch. Uh, Here's my hitch plate, bearings, gone Ford stud pattern this time. A lot of people ask me what stuff costs. So here we go. There's the prices. So that's for the axle, the hubs and all that kind of stuff. Just for that is 454. Aussie dollars, obviously. So yeah, pause it on that if you want to have a read of that, what everything is. Yeah, so that's obviously just for the, like, these trailer parts. This pump was, ooh, 460, I think. It was on special at Bunnings, which is kind of like your Home Depot in America. Um, and they were, you know, you just kind of pick up them up for 50 bucks, whatever. IBC, same thing. That's a food grade one. It's white, it's not clear. So I don't know if you can see the difference on camera. That's a clear one. I don't, I've got to get that out of the shed. That's just in the way. So this is white. So the UV won't affect the water in there and it won't grow algae. So yeah, see the white coating on it. Cause this one's just gonna stay outside in the weather all the time. So I just wanted to have a white one so it doesn't grow algae and clog up everything and turn gross. And I might, I'll probably end up getting a little, just a little cover for the motor, but yeah, so that's pretty much the basic parts of it. I'm going to nip down to the shops and start trying to work out my fittings I'm going to need for all this stuff, just so I've got it all here and it's all ready to go. Yeah, it's not going there, I'm just complaining, but yeah, nip down to the shops, grab them parts, a bit of like suction hose and that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, we can commence the build. Okay, back with me, box of goodies. A couple of lengths of hose, got me suction hose. And just a little bit of firefighting hose to go to the fire reel. And yeah, you kind of, I took the pump in and kind of rigged up how it's going to work. That's why all this stuff's kind of still together. Yeah. Clamps and stuff, bit of thread tape. Little hose fitting. I'm gonna um I'll show it later on the video but I've got some cam lock fittings because I want to be able to cam lock fitting to the pump because with this pump when you go to change oil there's no drain plug as such so you literally just have to so you literally just have to open that and kind of tip the oil out so I'm gonna mount it in a way where it's easily you know, transportable, just undo the cam locks and I don't know, might have some butterfly nuts or something or something holding it down super easy. So yeah, you can just kind of pick it up and do what you need to do. Yeah, all this was about 200 or 220, 230. 
believe it or not, all this stuff's pretty expensive, especially for these ball valves, these school mat ones. They're good ones. But yeah, it's, uh, stuff ain't cheap, that's why. Like I was saying before, people ask how much all this stuff costs. Probably, what are we? Jeez. Uh, 11, 1200 bucks deep already. We haven't even built it yet. And that's not even really counting the steel, so. Speaking of steel, I need to go get some. All right, what are we gonna pick? I reckon, I kind of wanted to build it out of that patio tube, but it's only 1.6 thick, and it's not really gonna cut the mustard, I don't think, for a ton of weight, so. Oh, I'd come close. I, was, I would have welded about 50 by five flat bar underneath it where the axe was gonna sit, but I think what I'll do is just make it out of 50 mil square. Um, that's three mil thick, so that's gonna be plenty, plenty strong enough for what we're doing. Um, and then all the little kind of bracketry and stuff we can do with the smaller 25 mil stuff. Yeah, plenty of steel here, so let's get cracking. going so this trailer is going to be very similar to the last one I built or last ones I built a little few of them um, yeah motor on the right hand side here always think about stuff like pull starting obviously that's on the right hand side so you know you wouldn't not that you would but you know mount it like that or something silly so bit of room there for the motor and same thing there the um, fire it was going to be up there so that doesn't really matter any of that um, so that's pretty much I reckon these will be very similar to the last one I can't remember I think it was like 1600 or 1500 did I go long that's 1500 there yeah I reckon 1500's right on the money 1500 and a meter wide 1.5 long meter wide and the rest we can figure out from there so I think that that 50 by 50 is an 8 meter length so I'm gonna just do a quick few calculations see the best way I can work it for the steel without wasting any of it. Um, and yeah, then I'll start chopping some steel up. All right, so just did some quick calculations. We got the two side ones, the two end ones. That, that does my rectangle, which the IBC is gonna sit on. And then we got two times 1550 for the draw bar, the A-frame. And that's eight meters on a dot. Obviously we're gonna lose a few mil from cutting, so do them ones first and then whatever is left, I'm just gonna split right in the middle and that's gonna be our A-frame for the trailer. And then that's the main body done. So that'll use that whole length of 50 by 50 and then any other brackets and blah, 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 we've, we can just use off cuts and small bits that we've got lying around. So that works out perfect. So let's get chopping. Well, when I wrote down the 950, that was a stuff up 900 it should have been. So, obviously, because you got 50 mil each side, and that makes up your meter. So, yeah, just before I started chopping, I was like, that doesn't seem right. So, yeah, chopped them at 900 anyway. 
which is bang on where we need to be. got all them bits of steel cleaned up. Um, I was going to miter the end on a 45, you know, and have it all nice and so you can't see the welds and all that. But you know what? Me, uh, me miter saw shit itself and I can't be bothered doing all the 45s to be honest with you. It does the same thing. I'm just going to make a rectangle out of it and um, probably put some 50 mil caps in the end eventually. Um, like I said, she ain't going to be a flash trailer. It's, uh, it's just going to be a workhorse. So I ain't too fussed, but I'm going to Get that welded together now and in the frame double check it all might even get the um a frame on it and then what have we got then axle wheel bearings all that kind of stuff and yeah find some rims for it i guess and we can start piecing it all together Well, this IBC sit on here, I'm going to work out where I want my axle. Um, if you've seen the last video, I was saying that you want to have downward weight on your tow ball. Um, so you've got to make sure your axle is backwards of the majority of the weight on your trailer. Um, it's a bit different when you're building like car trailers, box trailers, whatever, you've got to kind of work out the weight of everything. But obviously with this here, this IBC is the majority of the weight on this unit. So you can pretty much see the middle of the IBC is going to be there. And generally you want to be about 100 mil back with your axle. Um, I'm probably going to go... Probably going to go a little bit more because that motor is just a small motor, it doesn't weigh much. So I think I'm going to run about 150, which is about there. So the centre of my axle is going to be there, um, which I think will work out quite well because at the same time I still want to be able to be able to pick it up by hand um, and put it on the quad without having to wind a wheel down and up um, to do it fast, you know what I mean, if there's a fire. So I'm just going to... Put a little mark where I want the axle. So I reckon about there to be the centre. And I'll measure from the front so I can just get it to like the nearest kind of full measurement. Um, we'll go 740. 740 will be the centre of our axle. Write that down to 740 center axle. Awesome. So we'll just get our A frame welded together. Uh, don't overthink it too much. Obviously, however wide your trailer is, there to there. That's going to be the outside of the A-frame measurement there to there. So, yeah, measure that, set them, 
the right width. Tack them, tack them up there, and then you can weld them on afterwards. Right, just tack there, you've got to start thinking about your plate, which holds your hitch on. So work out where it's going, just before you go crazy, weld that up. Nothing wrong with them wells, eh? Anyway, I'll just um, flip it over, weld everything up, and then we should be good to stick it to the frame. Alright, you guys remember how to find the centre of your trailer for your A-frame before you weld it up? Showed you in the last video. So I'll put a centre mark there, centre mark there, and then when you get your string line, as I've got here, you line the, you line the string line up with the two centres, and then once that's done, you should have the centre of your yeah, A-frame like that. So that's how I do that. All right, that um, A-frame -frame is all welded on. I'm just marking up where my axe was going. Like I said, this, is, this axe has gone straight to the frame. Super easy. Not like my other trailers where you got the springs and all that kind of junk. So um, <clears throat> uh, I know I said before I measured, was it 740 from the front to the center, center of the axle? So, I'm using 45 mil square axles, so half of that, 22.5. So, look, I've just taken 20 mil off that measurement, and the line there is 720 from the front, and that's going to be the front of the axle, that line there. And I've got a line over there, so um, yeah, sit the axle on, center it, and weld it on. I'll um, I'll have to preheat it a bit because she's uh, she's nice and fat, so I'll get a bit of. Get a heat into it before I weld it on, and yeah, we'll be gravy. All right, that's pretty good. 1023 mil either side from that edge to that edge so I'd say that's going to be central um, yeah like I said preheat these bit cover the ends up with some rags so I don't get all welding spat up all over them yeah let's weld this bad boy on Some nice, nice chunky welds on them. Um, look, I know you can do a few passes over the weld and that, but the funny thing is, I want it to stick, but I don't want it like impossible to ever get off. Just in case, for some reason, you know, you might want to use this axle on something else or whatever. Um, I still want to be able to remove it one day without, you know, having welds all around it and having to bloody get the oxy out to melt it off so I'm pretty confident that it'll never ever go anywhere as it is and um, yeah just don't want them to go too crazy with the welding but that'll stick I am guaranteeing that so sweet let's get some hubs on the axle and then I can dig out some rims and then we can flip it over Alright, just 
just like the last video, I um, I was like lying my stuff out on some clean cardboard. And our split pins. I just like giving everything a bit of a wipe down first. Like, all oh, this is super overkill. This thing's literally just gone around my yard, but I don't know. Just can't help doing things properly. Actually, got some fancy gloves now. So I can get grease all over my hands now while I pack these. Nice big blob on your hand. And work it into your bearing. So you're pushing it down, squeezing the grease in through the gaps. Which you'll be able to see soon. Alright, see it's come through the middle there. So you need to get it like that all the way around. When you've got them inner bearings in, you just want to knock your um, dust seal in. Just till it's flush. Beautiful. but I'm going to let it cool down a bit more before I assemble this hub. Just don't want the grease to melt. And yeah, something like this, you don't want to pour water on. You just want to let it cool down slowly. So I'll come back in a bit. All right, while I was waiting for it to cool down, I just went and started painting all the welds and stuff and the underneath while it was easy to get to and also bolted the hitch on. So yeah, it took about about half an hour for that axle to cool down decently but um yeah let's get these hubs on now Let's always give the dust seal a bit of loving a bit of grease a bit of lube When I'm doing trailer hubs, I always crank them up nice and tight to where they don't really turn anymore. That kind of seats them nice. Then from there, just back up until your next hole. Perfect. And the old split pin goes in. And you 
dust cap goes on. Sometimes these are really hard to get on, sometimes they go easy. Just want to give the hubs a bit of a spray can black. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. This uh, this paint's clearly an old tin. All right, he's going in the bin. Let's try that again. The old anti seize on the threads. Hope the offset's alright. I want it pretty tight. Oh, yeah, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. It's looking good. Just had a thought before I bolt that down. I'm just going to get a bit of paint there behind it on the frame. Just because it's going to be a real pain in the butt to get to otherwise. Pretty even gap between it. Perfect. Something like that. It's starting to look like a trailer, eh? Alright, to hold that IBC down to the frame, I'm just going to chop a bit of angle iron, same as I did on the last trailers, and this do like angle in the corner, corner, and two at the back. Weld it on, that'll hold it down nice. Here's my aforementioned pieces of angle iron. So they'll literally just like, slip over get welded on the back and then I'll just hold that down nice and tight.
All right, all done. Their bits in front are just to like lock the IBC in so there's no movement at all. Um, yeah, just brace it up nicely, so beautiful. Here's a closer look at the little brackets just to hold it on. Not going anywhere. All right, I'm, uh, I'm gonna wrap it up the Sabo here. I will um, might come back out after dinner. Just gotta get some dinner going for the family. And then might come back out, have another play with some motor mounting, all that kind of stuff. Or I might just leave it for tomorrow. So anyway, I'll see you then. Okay, it's next morning. Um, it's a really windy day today, so I apologize for all the wind noise. You can probably hear in the background, but can't do a lot about it. So uh, today we've got to mount the pump, uh, the fire reel, and a few other little things, bit of painting, bit of finishing off. So yeah, it shouldn't be too much longer and we can give this thing a test. So yeah, let's get into it. Well, I want the motor to sit like rough, roughly about there. So what I think I might do, I might put some more um, box along the back here. And then, see the bottom of this motor, it's literally, obviously you've got this plate, but it's only these two bolts which actually hold this whole thing. There, so nothing's actually, the motor's not supported on this plate at all. So, yeah, I think I might box that out and then just run a bit of angle there. And this motor can bolt directly to the angle. And then when I do need to change the oil, it's just a matter of going zoop zoop, two bolts. And then obviously your cam locks can come off and then I can give it an oil change nice and easy. So, yep, I think that's gonna be the plan. Crazy, it's just M2 bolts. Cool. Okay, for the fire reel, I've literally just got this old plate that I had lying around. That'll pretty much be bang on for that. Drill the four holes in that. Same thing, bit of offcut. 700 long, it's near enough to what I wanted. That'll get welded on there. And then I'll um, weld it on the trailer, get this mounted, and we can start hooking stuff up. the glove. <clears throat> if you're not going to clamp stuff down, always chuck a glove on.
All right, I just wanted to sit that on there so I can do a little brace, make sure it's not in the way of the fitting or anything like that. That's um, all welded up. I'm gonna take the motor off, give everything a bit of a wire brush and give it a quick lick of paint and I can bolt everything back on. And we can start hooking up uh, hoses and fittings and stuff like that. And what else do we need to do? Hmm. Oh yeah, just a little thing with a little like latch on the hose reel and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, making progress. We'll see you in a tick. All right. Paint's drawn, so we'll start getting some um, fittings buttoned up. Might as well put this hose tail on my uh, fire reel. Let me get you in here and have a look. This is what we got going on. So, obviously your feed to your pump is out there. Ball valve, suction hose, just loops around so it's easier. Cam lock there, so I can just pop, that comes off. And that's the inlet to the pump, outlet. One of these is going to a garden hose which just clips on. Dook which will be cable tied up around to the side of the IBC and with like a five meter kind of length up the front. So I can hoon around on the quad holding the spray gun and just drive next to all the plants and water them. And yeah, same thing, ball valve, so you can isolate whatever you want on or off at the time. And this one goes to the, the fire reel like that. Same thing, isolate. 
and also cam lock. So pop that off, pop that off, two bolts on the pump and that's off. So when I need to service it, I can change the oil nice and easy because like I said, you gotta actually take this pump off and tip it sideways to get that oil out of there when you're doing an oil change. But yeah, it's come along good. I reckon you can probably almost put some water in it and test it out really. Why not? Uh, I might just, might just make sure we got a little hole. Got to drill a little hole in the cap so the IBC doesn't suction in when you're pumping water out of it. Just a little breather hole. Uh, one thing I forgot to buy was a jockey wheel, so that'll be coming next time I head into town. And what else? Oh, some some kind of like something to hold the hose reel from spinning as you're driving around. This one's actually not too bad. It's, it's quite a bit solid compared to the other ones, but I reckon that'll loosen up just with a bit of use. Probably needs a bit of grease or something. Um, but yeah, we can, we can give a little run for the meantime anyway, see what it does. I had this battery sitting there on the A-frame just to weight it down while I was mucking around with the hose reel and stuff. Um, but look, it doesn't tip backwards without it on. And so this is bone dry and you can, look at that. I reckon I've weighted that just about as perfect as you can get. So that's empty, don't forget. And then once once you've got some water in, all that forwards weight's gonna come onto it. So yeah, I reckon I nailed that. going on in here. Hey, well that's filling up. I just want to have a quick play with it. Not that it's anywhere near finished. Still need to get my garden hose, a little hook on the front for the hose. Um, and yeah, finish off this with a little catch so it doesn't spin, but yeah, I just want to fire this up and see what happens. Gotta love a Honda motor, eh?
Gee, I, I reckon when that's um, when I got my hose on it, it's pretty much just going to be idling and will be more than enough for me. Anyway, I need to top up the fuel. It's only got a little dribble in there, so um, yeah, stoked. All right, I just actually got to duck out into town anyway, so I think I might grab that hose and the little hookies and all the stuff I kind of need to finish it off. And then it will be job done. Just got all the goodies we need. Fancy schmancy hose. Mark a few spots, maybe four. And one about there. And then all I do, I just loosen this off. And that scratches the line exactly where I need to drill the hole. That'll be one hole where the cross is. Holes. There you go, locked in place. Not too bad. Perfect amount of ball weight, I reckon. That's probably got 600 litres in it. So 600 kilos on that. And I can still lift that pretty easily. That's awesome. All right, we got the finished product there. All done. Pretty happy how it turned out. We got 15 metres of hose on there. I was originally only gonna put like five metres, but I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. It's just curled up there. So the whole point is to I'll have that gun in my hand, I'll have the quad hooked on, 
and I'll be holding the gun with the hose as I'm riding the quad and I can just stop next to plants and water them easy enough like that. But yeah, pretty stoked how this turned out. Awesome that I got the fire hose on it as well. You can never have too much uh, fire safety when you're living in the bush like this. And yeah, that little uh, that little Honda pump, we packed a bit of a punch, so that's the model of it. WX10T, little four stroke, nice and quiet. So I'll just have it idling as I cruise around the trees and can pull up and give the trees a water. So let's uh, let's go test it out. Well guys, I guess that's going to wrap that video up. Um, trailer works awesome. Stoked with how it's operating. I love that little pump. Yeah, everything's kind of gone to plan and yeah, very, very happy with the end result. So yeah, if you have any questions on this one, flick it down in the comments. I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Um, and then yeah, I guess I'll see you on the next video. Thanks heaps for watching everyone. Catch ya.